Good morning. We're a few minutes away before we get started here on Auto Suggestion Think and Grow Rich. Welcome, entrepreneurs' version of Think and Grow Rich. This is Paul Martinelli. Hope you are uh, having a great weekend, relaxed, and ready to go. Love this chapter. We'll get started here in about three more minutes. So uh, feel free. Uh, if you know, somebody will put in the comments. Um, if you'd like to get a copy of the book that I'm teaching from, uh, there's a way you can get that for free. Uh, the, somebody will post the link, or if you want to actually buy the buy the book itself, so you can like have have the book itself and hold on to it and highlight it as I've done. This is these are my notes for today's teaching. I kind of highlight all the different sections of the book that a chapter that I'm going to teach from. So feel free if you'd like to be able to pick up um, a copy of the. You can get that on Amazon, or if you want to get it for free and download it, you can do that too. Yeah, if you do, if you do want to go ahead and download it for free, also, um, there is uh, my teaching notes from session one are there, and then also um, uh, there there's a free gift uh, uh, here to their uh, CD uh, that has all kind of the the great quotes of of the book. So we're looking at chapter four. Uh, auto suggestion, uh, one of my favorite chapters, but I say that all the time. We'll get started in about two minutes. Uh, don't be afraid to comment, like, and share. Appreciate that when you do that. Also, um, you know, there is a fantastic uh, program that I have that corresponds to this study uh, called Fully Resourced. And so if you'd like information on uh, a fully resourced program, it's a mentoring study program. Um, you can send an email to Rick. R-I-C-K, Rick at paulmartinelli.net, Rick at paulmartinelli.net, and um, send him an email, and he can give you all the information on a study that corresponds with this. It's a uh, it's about a nine-hour video study program that teaches all the processes from Thinking Grow Rich, uh, and then also has a, a, a teaching mentoring program uh, connected to it. So if you'd like more information on that, you can go ahead. Welcome, everybody. Great to see you. we got about one more minute, and then we're going to get uh, started right in um, on to this teaching. Hope you had a great weekend. Hey, for those of you who are John Maxwell uh, team members, this is a fun week, right? This is IMC, International Maxwell Certification, uh, online certainly going to be the online event of the year, I'm sure. So uh, make sure, hey, it's never too late to register. If you're part of the JMT and you've not registered, make sure you do. And for, for those of you who may be founding members of the John Maxwell team, if it's been a while uh, since you've come back, this is our 10 year anniversary. So make sure they, uh, Chris Robinson and Mark Cole have made some fantastic opportunities available for those of you who'd like to come back and re-audit uh, the training. So make sure you go to the online resource uh, page for the, for the John Maxwell team and register for this IMC. A fantastic, a fantastic program. You're gonna absolutely love it. Uh, great, great, great speakers that they've got lined up, a whole lineup, the whole faculty, and what a great way to connect with you know thousands of you know, John Maxwell team members around the world. So we are at 9.30, so welcome everybody. We are a continuing our study on Think and Grow Rich, and each time I teach Think and Grow Rich, I'm teaching this through a, a filter of thinking, and this time it's through the thinking of filter of an entrepreneur. This chapter, auto suggestion. You know, I was, um, I had an opportunity. I'm, I'm doing some work right now with uh, Joseph McClendon III and Dr. Daniel Amen. Um, if you haven't signed up for the Brain Revolution, make sure you go and, and register for that. Somebody can put the comments in the comments where you can register for the Brain Revolution. There's a Love Your Brain, Love Your Life challenge right now that's really cool to be part of. But I was I'm working with Joseph McClendon. Joseph McClendon, of course, has been the teaching partner for Anthony Robbins for three decades. This guy has trained five million people live. Could you imagine that? Um, and <clears throat> his story is very much like mine. Um, had, a, had kind of a, a, a tough period in his life when somebody gave him a copy of the book, Think and Grow Rich. Now, this is the copy that Patrick Hayes gave me back in 1991. Now, when he gave it to me, he didn't give me a used book. When he gave it to me, he gave me the, the book brand new. I've just, just read it thousands of times. Joseph was, uh, I believe, was 19 years old, and he was homeless. He was living in a box. He was living in a cardboard box behind a, behind a store. And a gentleman handed him the book. And the book ended up changing Joseph's life. And when Joseph was telling me the story, he shared with me that this, this chapter, 
the chapter on auto suggestion is the one that really changed his life and is his favorite one. As a matter of fact, I, I asked Joseph to, to sign uh, my, my copy of the book and, and he did. He signed it uh, uh, under the chapter of, of auto suggestion. Now, in, in the study up until now, we've been talking about Napoleon Hill saying that there's a secret in the book. And if you can find the secret, you can have anything you want in your life. And I've shared in the chapter on desire that I believe the secret of the book is having the understanding and then applying that understanding to, to the idea that you and I have the ability to control the vibrational frequency of our thoughts, that we can actually increase the amplitude of the vibration of our thought until that thought becomes the dominating thought in our mind. And, and we said that, you know, the, the secret of the book is, is that when we, when we first are entrepreneurs, we, we have an idea, an inspired idea comes to us and, and we want or wish or hope for that thing. And then it becomes kind of a desire. Then, then if, if we stay with it, if we'll, if we'll add faith to it, if, if we'll add focus and attention to it, then all of a sudden it, it becomes a burning desire. And then it becomes a white hot desire. Then it becomes what I believe is the secret to where it becomes an all consuming obsession. But how do we, how do we get that idea programmed into our mind? And that's what he's going to talk about here in this principle on auto suggestion. Now, this may be the most direct he is in any of the principles. There's 13 principles in the book. So there's desire, there's imagination, there's intuition, right? There's even sexual transmutation of energy. There's, there's a, a persistence, right? There's decision. This is auto suggestion. But in this, in this principle, this is where I think he is the most direct in giving you exact instructions. It's also where he is most emphatically begging you to do this step. He is, it, 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 as, as we go through the chapter, you'll hear he's saying, you have to do this. 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 In order for the secret to come alive, this principle, this principle must be applied. Okay? So we're on page 77 in the book. And again, if you look in the comments, there's a way where you can download the book for free or you can buy, uh, you can buy it on Amazon, the, the exact version that, that I'm teaching from. He says, auto-suggestion is a term which applies to all suggestions and all self-administered stimuli which reach one's mind through the five senses. Stated in another way, auto-suggestion is self-suggestion. It's the agency of communication between the part of the mind where the conscious thought takes place and that which serves as the seat of action for the subconscious mind. What's he saying here? He's saying that basically we have two parts of our mind. He's saying that there is this thinking mind, that's our conscious mind, that's where our free will lies, that's where our awareness lies. You're using your conscious mind right now to tune into this. You're thinking thoughts, maybe you're taking notes, you're evaluating what I'm saying, you're, you're filtering whether you, whether you buy into this idea or not. And then there's this other part of our mind. Unlike our thinking mind, this is our emotional mind. This is, this is the part of us where our spiritual center is. The, the early Greeks referred to this part of us uh, as our heart of hearts, our sanctum sanctorum, that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So this is where our self-belief lies, our self-identity, our self-esteem. This is where all of our habits are, 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 are programmed. If you think about it, when, when you were learning how to, to, how to drive a car, you, had, you activated your conscious mind, so you were thinking really hard, you were, you were thinking about every single move you, you had to make, you were thinking about how much pressure to put on the gasoline, how much pressure to put on the brake, how to steer, how, how fast or how slow to go, when to make that turn, when not to make that turn. All of your conscious energy was focused on, on, on making all of these decisions. At first, it's almost overwhelming. But through repetition, over and over and over again, through the use of the five senses, this process of auto-suggestion takes place. And what happens is, is we begin to encode, jo Joseph McClendon would, would use the word encoding, we begin to encode the pattern of making these decisions into our unconscious mind, our subconscious mind. And then it automatically becomes habit. Now, you know, when we drive now, if, if you've been driving for any period of time, you don't really think about driving anymore. You're not making, you know, those kinds of conscious decisions. Your subconscious mind just kind of goes on automatic pilot. It knows how to drive the car. You can talk on the phone. You can be listening to music. 
People could be putting on their makeup. We can do all kinds of things while we're driving now without using our conscious mind. And so what he's saying here is, is that we have the ability, we have the ability, we have the God-given right, free will, to choose any thought we want, to program our own mind, to program that subconscious mind with what we want to believe and the behaviors that we want to take in order to bring that belief into fruition. So if we go down to line six, he says, through the dominating thoughts, and that's key, it's got to be the dominating thought. See, when, when you first start to use this process of auto-suggestion, don't expect that it's going to happen automatically. It's not. It's going to have to take time because this new idea that you're programming in your subconscious mind, it's just a baby idea. It's brand new. It doesn't have that same powerful vibration that, you know, other beliefs, other ideas and concepts that you've entertained for long periods of time and have made decisions all your life on. It, it doesn't have that same, that same power. It's not the dominating thought. So he says, through the dominating thoughts, which one permits to remain in the conscious mind, whether these thoughts are negative or positive, is immaterial. The principle of auto-suggestion voluntarily reaches the subconscious mind and influences it with these thoughts. I think that's really critical, critical for us to understand is that it works both ways. It, 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 it's kind of like, you know, electricity. It, we, we can use electricity to fry an egg or we can use electricity to fry a man. We've done both in, 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 in human history. So it's, it's neither good nor bad, it just is. If, if we focus on and we become emotionally involved in fear and doubt and worry and anxiety, well, then that becomes the dominating program that we encode into our subconscious mind. And ultimately, it begins to dictate our lives. He says, no thought, whether it be negative or positive, can enter the subconscious mind without the aid of the principle of autosuggestion, with the exception of thoughts picked up from the ether. This means inspired thoughts, right? Because when we are inspired, these inspired thoughts are really a reflection. They're really a reflection because when we're inspired, we're actually tuning into the spiritual side of ourselves. And so we're actually being reminded of a possibility. This is why our memory works both ways, right? Our memory work works certainly backwards. We can remember the past, but we also have the ability to remember the future. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the, to the chapters of, of, of the brain and, and the mind. He says, stated differently, all sense impressions which are perceived through the five senses are stopped by the conscious thinking mind and may either be passed on to the subconscious mind or rejected at will. The conscious faculty serves, therefore, as an outer guard to the approach of the subconscious. In other words, as we're entertaining our idea, we're thinking about, you know, we want to grow our business. We want to double our income, right? We want to, we, we, we want to we grow our sales. Whatever it is, we, we want to open up a new product line or a new service. Whatever that, whatever that new idea is, as long as it's in our conscious mind, we have the ability to accept the idea or we can reject the idea. Once that idea makes it into our subconscious mind, we have no ability to reject the idea. Our subconscious mind is deductive. It accepts any idea, any concept as truth, and not just truth, but as our truth. We believe that to be true for ourselves. Again, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The challenging thing about this is that for most people, when we have an idea that comes into our conscious mind, we begin to think in reverse. So we have this idea, maybe, maybe when, when Patrick Hayes handed me this book, I was earning $20,000 a year as a janitor. And he asked me, you know, what my goal was. And I started to say my goal was to earn $100,000, but I quickly checked myself and, and lowered it to 50. And Patrick interrupted me as, as, as any good coach or mentor would and said, oh, why, why, did you, why did you back away from the $100,000? Why did you just reject this $100,000 idea? And the reason why was because in my logical mind, in my kind of thinking mind, it made no sense. I, I looked at my past results, I looked at the conditions and circumstances I was in, and I saw no logical way I could ever get to $100,000. I didn't know anybody who had ever made $100,000. So the idea just seemed completely out there for me. It seemed, it, it seemed impossible. And therefore, in my conscious mind, I rejected the idea. And Patrick said, 
as he started to teach me this, he started to say, this part of us, and we're going to see this as we go into the chapter, this part of us, our subconscious mind, has no ability to reject an idea. It accepts the idea as truth. It accepts the idea as truth. Think about it. When, when, when we were all little children, we believed in the tooth fairy. We, we believed in the Easter bunny. We believed in Santa Claus. Why? Well, because at, at a young age, our, our reasoning mind hadn't yet developed. We hadn't developed the, 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 the ability to logically think into, could somebody really live in the North Pole, have a bunch of elves, make toys for all the... We couldn't reason. We couldn't logic logically deduced that that, that 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 was an impossibility. And so that idea just went right into our subconscious mind without any filter. And, and then we believed it. And we believed it to be true. And we held on to it. And most of us were kind of devastated. We found out that there was no Easter Bunny, that there was no Tooth Fairy, that there was no Santa Claus. But then it started to make sense. And we started to reason because we had gotten older. So this is the power of auto-suggestion. And, and he's going he's gonna to share this. He says, in the great, this is on line 20, he says, in the great majority of instances, man does not exercise, he's talking about the free will of, of choosing one's thoughts, man does not exercise, which explains why many people go through life in poverty. See, we are not taught how to think. We are taught what to think. If you think about it, thinking is the highest function of which you are capable of. All the great scientists, all the great theologians have taught us that we become what we think about. For the last 6,000 years in, record, in recorded history, this is what's been taught, is that we become what we think about. And yet, and yet most people never exercise the, the, the process of understanding how we think. We are programmed what to think, not how to think. And, and as an entrepreneur, we have to take responsibility for our own growth. We have to take responsibility for what it is that we learn. You think about it as an entrepreneur, how ill-equipped we are to be successful. I mean, for, for most of us as entrepreneurs, we step into becoming an entrepreneur and instantly we have to understand all the, all the newest technology. We have to understand how to, how to connect on every single social media platform. We have to understand how to do webinars and Zoom calls and, 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 and virtual, virtual events. We, 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 we've got to learn sales and speaking. We have to learn the, the process of influence. We have to learn how uh, to understand a, a, accounting and legal issues. We, we, we're, we're not taught all of these things. We, 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 may, we, may, we may get a, you know, a, a cursory course on them. But as entrepreneurs, if we're going to think and grow rich, that requires that we take the responsibility for ourselves. We, we have to become the, 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 the director of our own life. We have to become the director of our own life. We have to take the responsibility to learn those things that are necessary to move us forward. This is why you know, I, I've, off, I've, I've always said that you know, if you've been gifted with an idea, if you've been sourced with an idea, then you have been resourced with the potential to bring it forward. But most people have never been taught how to do that. And so again, if, if you'd like to jump into a program where, where, where I teach this full process, send an email to rick at paulmartinelli.net. Get into the fully resourced program. It's a, it's a six to nine hour video training course and then followed on with monthly m mentoring with a group of other people who are, who are committed to understanding this process. Now, on page 78 is a really important line. It's on line 36. And he says, go back to the six steps described in the chapter on desire and read them again very carefully before you proceed further. See, when, when Patrick was mentoring me through the book, when I would go and sit down with him and, and he would meet with me like I'm meeting with you each week and we would take a chapter by chapter through the book, he would ask me if I actually did this exercise. And, and I can remember the first time through the book, I didn't. So I would read here in the book where it tells, where he's clearly telling you, the author, Napoleon Hill, is clearly saying, go back to, to the chapter on desire. Go back and read the steps that he's outlined. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow the book. So we're going to go back to page 36. And when we taught these on desire, those of you who were here for that, for that study, you know that when we did this, 
I talked about how these six steps really is the process of auto suggestion. He says, first, you define the amount of money for, 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 what, for that which it is that you want. You've got to be very specific. He says, second, you determine exactly what you intend to give in return. This is the law of sacrifice. We have to be willing to let go of things of a lesser value for the attainment of things of a greater value. He says, third, you establish a definite date. The purpose for this is, is, is that it creates urgency. It creates urgency for us. It makes it more real for us. Fourth, he says, you create a definite plan for carrying out. And remember, some of the best plans are just one or two steps. We don't have to have an elaborate plan. We have to have a definite plan. Then he says, take step one, two, three, and four. And he says, now write out a clear, concise statement for the amount of money you want, for what you intend to give, for the date and your plan. In other words, you take steps one, two, three, and four, and you write that all on a card. And then you use the process of auto-suggestion. And that's what he's saying. Now, now you begin to take this card and you're going to read it aloud daily to yourself. You're going to visualize yourself actually having what it is that you wrote on that card, having the money, having that, 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 that accumulation of the wealth that you've desired on the specific date. And you see yourself already in possession. So you're, you're building a, a, a future model of, of, of achievement in your mind. You're, so you're going to activate your imagination. That is one of your six intellectual faculties, right? You have six. You have reason, will, memory, imagination, intuition, and memory. You're going to use your imagination. You're going to begin to imagine yourself in possession. And then each day, you're going to program your mind. You're going to encode this idea into your mind through this process of auto-suggestion. He says, this is a fact of such importance as to warrant repetition in practically every chapter because the lack of understanding of this is the main reason the majority of people who try to apply the principle of auto-suggestion get no desirable results. This is so critical, is that most people will never do the steps in desire. See, again, on the cover of this book, it says that there were 7 million people who had bought the book. 7 million people had bought this book. This was back in 1991. But you know, the truth is, is that 7 million people didn't get rich. There were people who, who bought the book and never opened the book. My goodness, I, I bought this, I bought hundreds of this book, hundreds of copies of this book and, and given it to family and friends. And I would see them six months later and ask them, you know, you know, how's it going with the book? And almost none of them had ever even opened the book. Some may open the book and, 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 and they may start to read it and then they give up. They, they, they just don't believe it. Some, some will read the book all the way through and never take the time to do the exercises. Very few people read the book, apply the principles, do the exercises for a sustained period of time. And, it, and, 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 and it's no wonder that we have the, the one percenters and the 99 percenters. Let's go over to, uh, on, on, on page 79. He says, plain, unemotional words do not influence the subconscious mind. So when we're reading this card that we write on uh, from the chapter on desire, when we're, when we're visualizing what it is that we want, when we're seeing this mental model of perfection in the future, he's saying that we've got to, we've got to become emotionally involved in it. Plain, ordinary words aren't enough. We've got to make it bigger than life. In other words, we don't want to just see kind of the picture of what it would look like. We want to make it a movie. We want to make it a, a cinematic production in our mind. Why? Because again, remember, we said that our conscious mind is our thinking mind. It's where our awareness lies. It's where our free will lies. Our subconscious mind is our emotional mind. It activates on, think of energy and motion. So we, 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 want, we want this to be the dominant thought in our mind, right? We want to add as much energy. This is why he says, when you read the card, read it aloud. Why? Because there's power in your voice. In the beginning was the word. The word is made flesh. Life and death begins in the tongue. I mean, it's, it's written you know, so many different ways in so many different places. Success really does leave clues. So he's saying plain, unemotional words do not influence the subconscious mind. 
You will get no appreciable results until you learn to reach your subconscious mind with thoughts or spoken words which have been well emotioned with belief. With belief. He says, do not become discouraged if you cannot control and direct your emotions the first time you try to do so. See, entrepreneurs know this. As entrepreneurs, we, we, we almost expect failure in, in everything we do. I, I, think that's one, I think that's one of the, the, the magical things about being an entrepreneur is, is that we, we welcome failure. We, we, we know that, that, that failure is success's constant companion. We, we, we expect it. We welcome it. We don't run away from it. We actually use it as a learning tool. And so when, when, when we try something, just because it, it, it didn't work the first time, we, I mean, we think of Edison. He talks about Edison in the book here. He talks about how, how, how it took Edison 10,000 tries. Think about that. I mean, I was just watching the, the other day of uh, SpaceX as, as, as the rocket boosters were coming back and they, they had a failure again. Now, they've had successes in the past, but this, this last one failed. Do you think Elon Musk is going to say, ah, oh, well, forget it, it's not going to work? Do you really think Elon Musk is going to give up on SpaceX? Not a chance. Not a chance. Have you, have you seen the images that are now coming out of Mars have you seen what's going on on Mars right now where, where now they're launching the helicopter outside the rover and for the first time, they'll be able to have a helicopter hovering over the planet of Mars. Think about this. Think of how many failures it took us to be able to be able to do that. So if you don't, if you don't get it right the first time, you got to stay in the game. He says, remember, there is no such possibility as something for nothing. Ability to reach and influence your subconscious mind has a price, and you must pay that price. You cannot cheat even, even if you desire to do so. There, in other words, he's saying that there's no shortcut here. You're, you're going to have to do the work. You're going you're to have to pay the price. And, 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 and the price isn't always financial, is it? Sometimes, I mean, right now you're getting this program for free. But, but you're... But, but you're, you're, you're giving your most precious resource. You're giving your time. For, for some of us, uh, the price we have to pay is the ridicule and disbelief from family members and friends, the disappointment from family members and friends who, 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 who don't have the faith or belief in us, who, who don't see our dream. You, you, you have to pay. What, and, 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 and each of us has, has a different price to pay. He says, you must pay that price. You cannot cheat even if you desire to do so. The price of ability to influence your subconscious mind is everlasting persistence. See, that's a constant. Everlasting persistence. Remember, persistence is, is different than determination. Persistence means that we're going to continue to be determined in our effort in the face of failure. Even though we know we're failing, we're still going to persist. He says, so the price of the ability to influence our subconscious mind is that we have to have everlasting persistence in applying this principle. So even though we're reading our card, even though we're visualizing our heart's desire, even though we're taking all the action steps, we don't see the changes right away. We don't see, you know, wealth come to our, you know, our bank account doesn't change overnight. It could take six weeks. It could take six months. It could take six years. The, the, the question is, is where are you going to be six years from now if you don't do it? See, so you, you know, God willing, six years from now, you're going to be somewhere anyways. So, so, so you might as well take control of your life right now. He says, you cannot develop the desired ability for a lower price. You and you alone must decide whether or not the reward for which you are striving is worth the price you must pay for the effort. This is a you and you deal. He says, you, you, have, to, you have to decide whether the reward is worth it. This is why it's so critically important that you choose a goal that's worthy of you because you're going to trade your life for it. It's so important it, in, 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 in the fully resourced program. Again, just send an email to rick at paulmartinelli.net. I talk about the five mistakes that we make when we set goals. And, and one of the mistakes that we make when, when we set goals is, is that we set a goal that's too small. 
We set a goal based on what we think we can do rather than what we truly want to do. And the problem with that is, is that whenever we step out to do anything new, we, we're met with failure. So if, if, if you're earning $50,000 a year and your goal is to make $51,000 a year, you, you're, you're going you're gonna to be met with failure. If, 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 if you're earning $50,000 a year and your goal is $100,000, you're going to be met with failure. Well, obviously the reward of making $100,000 is probably worth the price to pay for, for, for some short-term failure. But if it's just a, another $1,000 worth of, worth of income spread out over a full year, you may not be willing to go through the pain and the sacrifice and the failure. And so we surrender our goal. Les Brown said most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss the goal, but because they aim too low and hit it. They rise to lowered expectations. You've got to do the work. This is a you and you deal. Let's go over to page 80 on line 89. He says, here is a most significant fact. The subconscious mind takes any order given it in the spirit of absolute faith. So in other words, your subconscious mind takes this order, this idea of, you know, I'm earning $50,000 a year. I want to earn $100,000 a year by this date. He says, it, he says that the subconscious mind receives that in absolute faith. Remember, it's deductive in nature. It has no ability to reject an idea. It accepts whatever idea is impressed upon it as truth, as your truth. He says, and it acts upon those orders, although the orders often have to be presented over and over and over again through repetition before they are interpreted by the subconscious mind. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. In, in, in other words, the reason why it takes us so much time to reprogram and re-encode this new idea is because it, 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 it's a safety mechanism where, where, where your subconscious mind is fighting for status quo. It's fighting to keep you safe. And now any change that you're going to make in your life opens you up to risk. And so instead of thinking that, that, that when you're failing that, that, that uh, your subconscious mind or the universe or God or infinite intelligence is saying, you know, you can't have what you want. Think of it as though infinite intelligence, God, the universe is saying, are you sure? Are you sure? And the way you're going to convince this part of you that you're sure that this is absolutely what you want now, that you're making this major change, you're, you're going to, because let's face it, if you're going to go from $50,000 a year to $100,000 a year, you have to change everything in your life. It's not just it's not just your income that's going to change. All of your habits are going to have to change. The people you hang out with are going to have to change. The way you make decisions are going to have to change. Uh, most m most of your daily habits and routines are going to change. You, you, you know, how how you spend your spare time. All that's going to have to change. There is no private good. You're not going to be able to make one change in your life in one area of your life and not affect change in every single area of your life. I mean, you're, you're going to have to make change in, 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 in all through your life. And so this part of you is saying, are you sure that you want to make this change? And so it requires that you apply yourself through discipline and through repetition over and over and over and over again before it becomes anchored and then becomes the dominant energy that you begin to broadcast and effectively live your life by. He says, following the preceding statement, consider the possibility of playing a perfectly legitimate trick on your subconscious mind by making it believe, because you believe it, that you must have the amount of money you are visualizing, that this money is already in waiting for your claim, that the subconscious mind must hand over to you practical plans for acquiring the money which is yours. See, as entrepreneurs, we understand the, the power of auto-suggestion is not just about reprogramming our mind. Certainly, that's one great aspect. That's the process. We use auto-suggestion in order to reprogram our subconscious mind. It's how you learned everything. Remember when, when you were just a baby, mom and dad would put you know, food on the spoon and say, open up. And you know, over and over and over again, you began to learn how to take, you know, how to take food from a spoon into your mouth sooner, you know, 
uh, or later, you ended up grabbing the spoon and then you started to be able to do it. When you first started, you had, you know, you know mashed potatoes all over your face, right? You ever see a baby eat spaghetti, spaghetti all in their hair? They're, they're learning the process over and over and over again. That's the process. So as entrepreneurs, we understand that, but what we also understand is that auto-suggestion allows us to become intuitively guided. Auto-suggestion not only allows us to program ideas into our subconscious mind, entrepreneurs understand that this part of us can also give us ideas. We can get clues. We can get a hunch. That's why he dedicates an entire chapter on the principle of the sixth sense. That, that through auto-suggestion, when we begin to enter into this relationship, with our other than conscious mind, when we begin to get very intentional, very deliberate, very focused on this process, we begin to have faith and belief at a completely different level. And what happens is, is we begin to see things that we never saw before. We begin to become aware of opportunities that we've never seen before. We, 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 begin, we begin to kind of hear you know, pieces of conversations that, 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 that we've heard before but never really seem to click or land on fertile field of, of possibility. But now all of a sudden, because we've activated this part of us, because this part of us is now beginning to scan our world and thinking, what is the best way for me to move this person from $50,000 a year to $100,000? What can I do? It begins to bring into our awareness ideas, people, conditions, circumstances that are in harmony with that same energy. Like attracts like. And so he says, we, we, the, the state of mind must be belief. He says, hand over the thought suggested in the preceding paragraph to your imagination and see what your imagination can or will do to create practical plans for the accumulation of the money. In other words, it's not just that we're programming into our subconscious mind that we want to, to, to go from $50,000 a year to $100,000 a year. What we're really saying is that we also want this part of us to give us direction, to intuitively guide us, to make us aware of what that very best next step is. Entrepreneurs, if you think about it, entrepreneurs, if, if, we, if there's one skill that an entrepreneur has over, over anybody else, it's their intuition. They just intuitively, they trust their gut they, they, they don't second guess themselves. They, 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 they don't require all the evidence to be in. They don't require all of the facts. They're, 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 will, they're willing, they're willing to, 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 to make a move on a hunch. They're, they're willing to have faith and belief that, that this part of them is communicating them and they, and, they, and they begin to trust that part of them. He says now on line 102, do not wait for a definite plan. Do not wait for a definite plan through which you intend to exchange services or merchandise in return for the money that you're visualizing. He says, but begin at once to see yourself in the possession of the money, demanding and expecting, meanwhile, that your subconscious mind will hand over a plan or the plans needed. In other words, don't worry about having some big elaborate plan. Some of the very best plans that I've used in business were one or two steps. Like, what's the next step for you? What do you, what do, well, intuitively, what do you know is the next step for you? Focus all of your time and your energy on, 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 on that step. Take, take that step. Don't worry about, you know, step number eight or nine or, 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 or step 100. What's the very next step? And the important word here I, I want you to get is on line 105, is, is expecting. See, when, when we expect something, that, 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 that's an expression of faith. When we do something with expectation, we have faith and belief that it's going to come to pass. And so we expect. And so if you're truly expecting for this process to work, then I would suggest that you get a small pad of paper and a pen and you keep it with you everywhere you go. Because you should be expecting that this subconscious mind of yours and this process is working. That, that you are actually in harmony with God, G-O-D, the grand overall designer of all things. That, that you're accessing infinite intelligence, universal power. 
and that you are expecting ideas to come to you. And that because you're expecting them, you're going to have a pad and a paper ready to, to capture those ideas. If you really believed that, that this process would work, if you really believed that, that a way would be made for you, if you really believed that a plan would be unfolded for you, then you would be writing it down. I'm, surpri I'm, I, I'm surprised when, when, when I meet people who are, who, who are new entrepreneurs and, 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 and they don't have a pad of paper or a pen to, to write ideas down. They, 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 they don't have a pad of pen or, or, or paper in their car right next to them in their seat. I always have one because I'm expecting an idea to come through. Entrepreneurs understand that ideas, Erlang Gills, ideas are, are like slippery fish. That if we don't gaff them with the tip of a pencil or pen, they slip away never to be seen again. And so... Our, our state of mind must be belief, it must be faith that sets up expectation. If we're really expecting the plan to be made, if we're really expecting the plan to come to us, if we're really expecting all the connections, then, then, then we'd have a pad of paper and a pen ready to go, ready to write down that, that next new inspired idea. Do not wait for a definite plan. He says, be on the alert for these plans, and when they appear, put them into action immediately. See, this is, this, this is obedience. This is obedience. Obedience builds faith. In other words, when, when you know, I, I, I can remember when I, would, when I was first starting out, you know, I would, I would be praying to God for, you know, some idea, some insight, some inspiration. And then, you know, I would be driving down the road and then, boop, you know, an idea would come into my mind. And the first thing I would do is kind of turn my head to God and say, you know, are you sure? You know, are you sure that's the right idea? Here it was, you know, I was asking God to open the door, give me a sign, make a connection, you know, you know, don't, don't, don't guide me by the feather, hit me with the two by four, like make, make it really clear. And then all of a sudden I would get this idea to, to call this person or go to that building and, and cold call on that account or, 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 or to take this next step. And what I would do is I would begin to question whether it was right or wrong good or bad, should I or should I, would it work, would it would not work. Listen to me, anything will work. Any, anything will work. Any, I, don't, I don't know what your dream is, but any, any dream you have will work. When, when, you, when you get an idea inspired, when you know like it didn't come from you, it's coming through you, we've all had those experiences as, entrepreneur, as entrepreneurs. When, when, when that moment comes, we don't ask whether it's right or wrong or good or bad, or should we or shouldn't we. We ask, is, is this idea in harmony with my dream? If I act on this idea, will it move me closer? And, and if it does, we, we have to act immediately. Because every single time we act immediately on an intuitively guided idea, we fortify our faith. We face in the direction of our faith, not our doubt. We, 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 we are affirming to this part of us that we are, we are, we are all in. We're affirming to this part of us that, that, that we are now in cooperation, that we are in harmony, that we're working together to bring this new condition, this new circumstance real in my life. This universe likes speed. It operates on speed. He talks a lot about this in, in the chapter on, on decision. When the plan appears, they will probably flash into your mind through the sixth sense. It's right, this is our intuition. In the form of an inspiration. This inspiration may be considered a direct telegram or message from infinite intelligence. Treat it with respect and act upon it as soon as you receive it. Failure to do so is fatal to your success. It really is. Because you are fortifying doubt. You're sowing the seed of doubt. This part of you operates by faith and belief. Remember, it's the spiritual center of you. 
you, intellectually, we live on three planes. Simultaneously, we live on three planes of existence. We are spiritual beings. We're gifted with an intellect. We live in a physical body. As spiritual beings, spiritual laws are faith and belief. We have to be in harmony, and and the, the spiritual center of you, your heart of hearts. This is this is where this is what the subconscious mind is. This is the God particle within you. This is where spirit dwells. This is where your soul lives and activates in you. It's in this part of your mind, in your heart of hearts, your sanctum sanctorum. And so, how how can spirit how can spirit flourish where there's doubt? How can spirits flourish where there's, where there's self-judgment, where there's fear? It can't. The state of mind must be belief. It must be faith. And there is no better way, there's no better way than showing this part of you that you have 100% faith and belief than through action. We say actions speak louder than words, don't we? So yes, it's very important that we use our words, that we visualize, right? That, that we read our statement aloud, that through repetition, we, we are encoding or reprogramming this part of our mind. But all of that is worthless if we don't act. And most people fail here. And here's why on page 81. He says, do not trust your reason when creating your plan for accumulating money through the transmutation of desire. Your reason, in, your reason is faulty. Your reasoning ability is faulty. See, your reason, your reasoning mind, your logic is based on, on your beliefs. When you're making a decision, it's your very best thinking that has gotten you where you are in your life. Your logic. Now, our beliefs are based on our evaluation of things, and frequently, if we'll reevaluate things about ourselves, if we'll reevaluate our potential, if we'll reevaluate our conditions and our circumstances, our beliefs will change. Said another way, Wayne Dyer said that when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And so when you begin to change the way you look at your potential, when you begin to change the way that you look at your business, your beliefs about your potential, your beliefs about your business, your, your beliefs about your ability change. But if we, if, if, if we rely just on our reasoning mind, we activate our intellectual intelligence and our IQ is based on our historical knowledge. It's based on all the things that we've done up until now. It, 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 it would be the same as, as you kind of getting in your car trying to drive you know, a uh, uh, hundred miles away from your home while looking in the rearview mirror and trying to determine, you know, whether you need to turn left or right based on what you're seeing in your rearview mirror, based on your past. You, you, your reasoning mind and your logical mind is really stored information. At best, at best your results on any given day our reflection of what you were thinking six months ago. It's not a reflection of your potential. And so again, in, in the fully resourced program, when I'm talking about the, the, around the, the, the mistakes that people make when they set goals, I say that goal setting is an intellectual process, meaning we activate our intellectual faculties. Again, I mentioned we have six of those. Most people activate their reasoning mind. And so we begin to reason, what can I do with my skills and knowledge and my ability right now? What can I do? But that puts us in a tiny little box because we're only opened up to, to, to you know, our historical knowledge or what other people tell us. We're never going into, into you know, the kingdom within us. We're never looking at our full potential. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to use our imagination and our intuition. We want to be intuitively guided. See, our, 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 our intuition, the spirit, is, is like energy. It's 100% evenly present in all places at all times. It's all-knowing. It's all-powerful. It's omnipresent. It has the ability to tune into the past, the present, and the future. And you know this. 
You've experienced this. You've used your intuition where, 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 you've, been, where you've been guided into the future. You've, you, you've, you've had the intuition where you were sitting there and, and, and an idea of, or, of, of a person's name came into your, came into your awareness and, 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 and you call them and, and they say, oh, we, we were just talking about you. We kind of laugh it off as coincidence. It's not coincidence. It's you tuning into, into their energy and them tuning into your energy and you attracted each other. This process absolutely works if you'll work it. But the state of mind has to be belief. It has to be faith. And your logic, chances are, doesn't believe in your ability to really do this. So th th this, th this is why he says, uh, if, if you go down to, on, on page 82, down to line 165, he says, these instructions may at first seem abstract. Don't let this disturb you. Follow these instructions no matter how abstract or impractical they may be at first. The time will soon come if you do so as you've been instructed in the spirit as well in an action. In other words, he's saying you're not just going to kind of go through the motions. You're entering into the spirit of this. He says if you'll enter into the spirit of this, if you'll act in the spirit of this, he says a whole new universe of power will unfold to you. That's a pretty big promise, isn't it? He says, skepticism in connection with all new ideas is characteristic of all human beings. But if you follow the instructions outlined, your skepticism will soon be replaced by belief. And this, in turn, will soon become crystallized into absolute faith. Then you will arrive at a point where you may truly say, I'm the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. This is, this, is, this is so powerful for you to understand. You don't, you don't have to fully believe the process in order for the process to work. Like you, you don't have to believe in gravity or understand gravity in order for, to have gravity work for you. But, you, but you, have to, you have to, at the starting point, you have to at least have the willingness to believe. You have to, you have to override that logical part of your mind that says, ah, this is, this is phony, this doesn't work. And again, we do this all the time. If you've ever sat down and you watched a scary movie, there you are, you're in your home or you're in the safety of a movie theater, there is no bad guy with a chainsaw behind the door. And yet, we experience that fear and that anxiety the same way as though we were in the movie. I can remember my sister Jeannie taking me to see Jaws. There I was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Landlocked, nowhere near an ocean, nowhere near a shark. There we were at the Dennis Theater, watching Jaws. Dun, 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 dun. You know the music. And seeing the shark jump out and everybody in the middle, popcorn all over everybody, right? We suspended the requirement of, of being there. We, we kind of went into a fantasy. We allowed our conscious mind to kind of turn its logic and its reasoning off. And we just for a moment in time allowed ourselves to take a mental trip. We allowed ourselves to kind of suspend disbelief long enough so that we could step into the movie. And we became emotionally involved. That's what you have to do here. That's what you have to do. He says, on, on page 83, line 181, he says, you are now reading the chapter which represents the keystone to the arc of this philosophy. The instructions contained in this chapter must be understood and applied with persistence if you succeed in transmuting desire into money. If, if you really want some help, if you want to be guided through this entire process in a very kind of linear thinking way, I have, a, I have a program called Fully Resourced. Send an email, rick at paulmartinelli.net. He'll give you all the information. It's a great digital program, shot, shot with three camera, B-roll, put the music, subtitled, so it's, it's easy to watch. And then every single month, we have a group get together where we'll mentor you through the principles of that program that will guide you to apply what you're learning in this study. Let's go to page 83, 197. He says, read the entire chapter aloud once 
every night until you become thoroughly convinced that the principle of auto-suggestion is sound, that it will accomplish for you all that has been claimed for it. As you read, underscore with a pencil every sentence which impresses upon you favorably. Follow the foregoing instructions to the letter and it will open the way for a complete understanding and mastery of the principles. You know what? Most people will not do this. Most people, statistically, most people will not do what he just said to do. And that is to read this chapter aloud until you fully buy into this idea. When, when, when Patrick Hayes had me sitting in the Crystal Tree Plaza on US-1 in North Palm Beach in his office called Ideas and Things, and he had me open up this book and go to the chapter on auto-suggestion. I mean, this is, this, is, this is what my book looked like. Patrick had me underline and highlight every single page, every single line. He took me through this line by line. You know, at first, it was easier for me to believe in the process than it was for me to believe in myself. And, 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 you, and you may find yourself there. You, you may right now find it easier to buy into the process than it is for you to buy into yourself. It, it doesn't matter, that's fine. Whether, whether, whether you're gonna buy into yourself or buy into the process first or second, it doesn't matter. But you do have to buy in. You, you, you have to go into the casino of life and, and put all the chips on you. You have to be willing to do the things that others will not do so you can have the things that others do not have. You, you, you have to be able to do that. You know, I was a high school dropout. I was earning $20,000 a year as a janitor when this idea was introduced to me, when Patrick sat me down and began to teach me, you have to understand, I had never read a book when he gave me the book. I had, I had, I had, I had if, if there was any belief that I had in me, it was disbelief. I had, I had, I had no belief. I, 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 had, I was all, I was, I was, I was living my life in surrender mode. I was, I was, I was hoping and praying that you know something would happen, something good would happen to me. It never even occurred to me that I could create something good in my own life. N it never occurred to me. I, 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 I would hope that things would change. I would hope that something would happen, that somebody would come in and, 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 and change my life somehow. I, I had zero faith in, in, in myself. No, 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 no belief in, in my potential. I, I, I just surrendered that this was about as good as it was going to get. I had bought into you know, all the old programming that if I was ever going to get ahead, it was going to take a long time, it was going to take a lot of work. And it's not that, it's, it's, it's not that it doesn't take a long time, it's not that it doesn't take a lot of work, but I, I had surrendered that that, that that meant that I was going to be cleaning toilets for the rest of my life. That's, that's all I could see for myself. I was so I was so conditioned and programmed to look at my past as the as, as the determining factor of what I could do for the future. And the understanding of this principle changed it for me. It empowered me. It gave me hope that hold it. There is something that I can do. And you know, isn't that isn't that the height of what being empowered means? Is, is that we don't have to wait for other people to do things. That, that, we, that we can, as James Allen said, take the helm of thought. That we can become the director in our own life. That we can control our fate. It is, it is, it is how God designed you to be. You're made in the image of God. God is the creator, therefore you are creative. I would love for you to jump into the fully resourced program, or you know what? If you if you're not part of a mastermind, and you and you, if you're not part of a mastermind group, 
like a true mastermind group, not, not a book study, but a true mastermind group, you know, just send, send Rick an email again. Send Rick an email and, and, and ask him about joining one of our mastermind groups. We take uh, you know, 14 to 16 people at a time for, for a full year. For a full year. We come in, we spend two days together as a group, and then every week for the next year, you're either with a coach one-on-one, you're with the group together, or you're with me one-on-one. Every single week, there's one of those touch points just to keep you on course. And, and we, we live this principle. We live this book for a full year. If, you'd really wanna, if you really want to walk this book for a year, jump into my mastermind group. I'd love to have you. Thanks so much for spending time. Again, don't forget Brain Revolution. Uh, love to have you check out those free resources. If you are a John Maxwell team member, don't forget IMC is coming up this week. Make sure you register. If you're a founding member and it's been a while since you've come back, come back, jump in. I hope to see you guys in, on the hop-in sessions on the Speed Networking. Be well, God bless.